This is the Davidson County Network. Hi, I'm Jamal Tara Kelly, and this is the Davidson County Network. Today, I'm here at JKS in Welcome, North Carolina, to sit down and talk with former NASCAR driver, Mr. Ed Barrier. We're going to talk about his life and career in NASCAR. So as always, sit back, have a nice cup of coffee, and enjoy the interview. This is the Davidson County Network, and we're here today with former NASCAR driver, Mr. Ed Barrier. How are you doing today? Oh, doing great. It's good to be here. Good to have you here. Good. Um, so we'll just jump right into this. So can you tell us about growing up in a racing environment? Yeah, it was pretty exciting. I uh, grew up, my dad raced at the stadium, uh, Bowman Gray Stadium, and then uh, he'd done some Grand American racing, done some traveling. Uh, about the time I got ready, old enough to be able to travel with him some, he kind of hung it up. Uh, he, uh, he, run, he won a couple championships at Bowman Gray Stadium. And, he had the opportunity to drive for Junior Don Levy in a few races and won one race up there at the stadium and it. And he was uh, pretty influential in my career and helping me out and get started, him and mom. And uh, we kind of started in go-karts. I think I was kind of a late starter according to the day's standards. <laughs> but uh, probably started when I was about 14 or 15 years old and, you know, got to win in several races. Had a good... Uh, good biker there that helped us on the go-karts, uh, John Yokely, and of course he's from Davidson County too, and uh, we, we won a lot of races, and so we started stepping up the ladder a little bit there and went to the Dash Series and graduated from high school in 1980 and then uh, went to Daytona, I believe it was in 81, and uh, uh, run my first race at Daytona in a Dash car, and we <clears throat> run second in that race, and I thought, man, we're getting off to a good start. This is going to be great. It's going to be easy. Wasn't nothing easy about it though, but uh, had a quite a few year, good few years there, and uh, and then we get progressed on up to the to Bush Grand National, which was I guess a late model sportsman back in the '80s. Got to run with uh, Sam Ord and Tommy Houston, Tommy Ellis, Jack Ingram, and uh, I tell you, it was a learning experience running with those guys. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Had a lot of good times right there, and uh, you had to learn from the best, you know, racing in that world. And then um, we uh, went to, uh, got a few lucky breaks there and run in 88 for Grover Sugar. We got the Cox Wood Preserving sponsorship, and I thought we was done hit the big time for sure then, driving for somebody else and letting somebody else pay the bills instead of the family on team, you know. So, <clears throat> first, one of the first races I run for them, run second at South Boston in 87, I believe. And once again, I thought, this is going to be good, you know. But uh, each and every race kept getting harder and harder. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of competition back then. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of cars, they sent a lot of cars home that didn't make the race. They'd have 60 cars, you know, at a race or something. And, and then we, uh, we lost that sponsorship to Rusty Wallace, who gave it to his brother, Kenny. Rusty was involved in the promotional end of the Coxwood Preserving deal, and then so Kenny was coming along, so he got the sponsorship, and Grover had to shut the team down, so it was back, back to trying to pick up rides here and there, and got to drive for John Pharaoh in a few races, and we had a you know a lot of good times there, and it was still you know on a string string budget, you know, and just not a lot of money to run against the guys, and, and then we started our own team in um, I don't know 1990 91 with my dad and uh, Will Spencer, who owns JKS here. And uh, come together and run, you know, some races there with Grease Lightning and Embers Charcoal and I don't know, every, all kinds of sponsorships that Will could come up with, just enough to get us to the racetrack. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of trying times there and, and just continuing on through, through my career there and trying to pick up some and run some ARCA races and. You know, we had some good races in the ARCA series. Really enjoyed running the ARCA deal. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot less pressure, you know, and um, actually we could be more competitive with that. And uh, then I got to run, uh, Jimmy Means called me in 98, 1997, I believe it was, and uh, we run uh, a few races in 97 for Lear and Jimmy. And then in 98, we had a you know full season with them and we, 
I actually got to win my first race at Hickory, and I think it was in April of 98. And, uh, you know, once again, I thought, here we go. We're going to get on a roll and get going. And it seemed like it, I don't know, it seemed like it hurt us more than it helped us, you know, because the expectations come, rose up. And uh, we just had, you know, a lot of problems after that, having, I'd getting in wrecks and then, you know, the, something happened to the car. But uh, I had a good time with Jimmy and, all the guys had a great group of guys there on that team, and and then uh, Junior Don Levy, I got to race for him in '99 for a few races, and then he wanted me to drive in 2000. So one of the highlights was getting able, being able to run the Daytona 500 in the year 2000. Uh, they still had qualifying races, and we had to get in through the qualifying races where you actually qualified for a race, you know, and you had to race your way in, and we were were able to do that, and. Um, had a had a decent run there, and uh, I, I think we run about half the season there. We had a lot of things, failures, and you know it was hard to make races back in with so many cars. And uh, Junior decided to go a different route, and so we split up there halfway through 2000. And then um, 2001, I was still driving some ARCA races for Lee Leslie, and uh, we got to, we went to Chicago, very first stock car race there. Uh, we won the ARCA race there, so we got a win in the ARCA race at Chicagoland and had several good races with uh, with Lee. And uh, After that, that was, uh, that was about the end of the driving career. Got to drive. A, we started, a, Kevin Harvick wanted to start a truck team, so we started that out of my garage there in, in the big town of Wahlberg and uh, got that started and then we moved to Kernersville and things, you know, progressed there to where he had a full-time truck team and we worked there a few years and then we was back to back home uh, hanging bodies and uh, doing fab work for JKS and JKS built a building over here in Welcome and decided he wanted to put everything together, you know, in one, you know, in one building. Well, I had been doing work for him. So we, we put it all together and uh, been here since 2007, I believe it was. And, but before 2007, after uh, we worked at uh, Harvix, uh, got hooked up with Alex Schantz, and we've done a lot of late model stock car racing. So we won the big race at Martinsville for the late model cars, and he won Bristol a few times and had a lot of good runs there and had a, really had some good times with him and his dad, Kenny, and that whole family. So um, had a lot of great experiences through the years in racing and just uh, – you know, we're just uh, looking for see what happens next, and got a grandson now, three years old. But he's, I don't know if he's going to be interested in racing, but he's going to be interested in tractors. So <laughs> he's a lot of fun. So, so when did you first decide? When did you <clears throat> first get a passion for racing? Was it watching your dad race? Or? Yeah, watching my dad race at the stadium. We'd go to the Bowman Gray Stadium every Saturday night, and uh, just kind of got interested in. You know, it was a lot of fun watching him, and I got to go up north with him a few times, Trenton, New Jersey, and, uh, and then I, and I got to started going with him by myself there, you know, went to Franklin County there, and uh, got to go with a few times, I guess I was around 12 or something, just started going with him a little bit, and then he was kind of like myself, he kind of lost the sponsorship and, you know, backings that some of the guys had, or some of the owners he drove for started getting out of it, and he had a business to run and a family to look after, so he, he kind of had to, to look after the, the business he was in and it kind of cut back on his racing and kind of got away from him. And uh, he was, he's, he's still a number one race fan for sure. He's, uh, I, uh, he, I'm sure he could do it today. He still thinks he could get him one and drive it. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he really loved racing. So I'm sure many NASCAR fans, they don't understand how difficult it is to own a team or to start a team. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And yeah, it's, it's really difficult. I mean, when I first started, my mom and dad, you know, they helped me get get the first car. We bought it from Terry Labonte. Uh, it was one of his old cars. And then uh, you know, my dad bought it, and he said, well, actually, we'd bought a dash car before then. We went and pulled a Vega out of the weeds over in Thomasville. It had a roll cage in it, and we had to put that put that together and had uh, Daryl Bryant help us a little bit with that and tried to get started. And, you know, had several people through the years help me, you know, with a, uh, uh, had a lot of good friends, a lot of good help, you know, Aaron Dudley and Todd Berger and just on down the line, you know, a lot of guys that went to school with to help us out and uh, Chip Lane and just uh, 
a number of people that that behind the scenes was really helping us and it don't seem like you, you see that a lot today with kids growing up that you know there's a lot a lot more community help I'm I'm sure there is you know like with for the Bowman Gray Stadium guys but for the guys traveling or trying to make it in the bush or the Xfinity excuse me you, it's it's more of a you, a company you know instead of a lot of guys getting together and being able to go do it you can't do that anymore and uh my dad, you know, helped me get that first car and first motor, and I was working at Childress's at the time. And um, he said, you're going to have to build a motor when it needs rebuilt. And I said, okay. <laughs> so uh, we tried to do our own engine program, our own setups, and, you know, just keep paint the car, body work and all, you know. And we had tried to do what we could do to the sponsorship what we had. And then uh, NASCAR would go to changing rules on motors, and you had to get – go from V8 to a V6 and it pretty much just puts you out of business, you know. And Speak that's when I got the opportunity to drive for some other teams and it just, uh, it was just hard to do it on your own. Speaking of sponsorships, how difficult is it to, to get sponsors? Uh, it's very difficult. You got to be a good salesman and that I'm not. <laughs> and a good politician and that I'm not. Uh, I just loved racing, you know, and you got to be able to be a, a salesman and you know politically correct with whoever you talk to and when i grew up with a lot of those drivers and they were not not too many of them politically correct with whatever you know they told you what was on their mind and that's the way it was you know the great learning great learning experience for me you know growing up with those guys throughout the years who was your favorite sponsor uh, whoever we could get to get on the car. <laughs> I mean, we had some good ones through the years, you know. They just it was it was always not very long term, and it was just enough money to get us to the track and get us in trouble, really, you know. I mean, you know, it was Grease Lightning, uh, Cox Wood Preserving, which was you know a great sponsor, but you know they decided to go there. You go with the political world, you know. They had to. Uh, exposure with Rusty Wallace so naturally they you know that got them more exposure than they would with me so you know I can kind of understand the, their point there and they left and you know Lear uh, they built seats for you know the automotive world uh, that was great sponsorship and uh, we had Hills Brothers Coffee uh, Ace, Embers Charcoal Grease Lightning you know we had a lot of uh, we had the chicken pit lounge for Watkins Glen one time, you know, <laughs> nobody probably ever, you'll never see another sponsor like that on a, in a touring car, you know, so, but uh, we just uh, tried to get help in any way we could, you know, somebody buy tires or just uh, all kinds of things you'd think of back then trying to, to make it happen so you could get to the next race. How did you balance uh, family life with your racing career? Uh, it was kind of hard, you know. Uh, uh, my wife, she kind of worked all the time. I kind of worked on the race cars there for a while and looked after my daughter Jessica. So uh, it was a, uh, it was a great experience being able to take her to school, you know, and uh, still come home and work on a race car. So I owe a lot of that to to my wife, you know, her working and getting us through, you know, some rough times there when we when Jessica was growing up and you know looking after that. So uh, it was just I wish it could have progressed to where you know a little bit further to where they could have traveled more you know when when I was racing uh, my wife was working she didn't get to travel a whole lot but there towards the end she did get to travel and Jessica was getting old enough to start going and then it kind of like you know sponsorship left and it was kind of like my dad I had to you know kind of get a job you know it's time to get to work here you know to try to make some money which I you know I was surviving and and making a little money while we were racing on our own you know and my own team trying to do odd jobs at you know different times but but it's all been good so i'm proud of you know how she grew up and proud of everything that's happened so how much has nascar changed since you were driving um and do you think it's for the better i guess what's your <laughs> current what's your opinion on the current state of nascar uh, it's changed tremendously uh me growing up when i did in the 80s and you know early 90s <clears throat> racing you know in that era I wouldn't give anything in the world for it because, I mean, it, 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 it made you work for it, you know, for sure. And uh, now it seems like if, if these guys come along, can, well, I mean, it was that way back then. If you could find money, you could find a ride too. But 
it seemed like there were more people that drove the cars, had to work on them and understand them and, and know what they had to do to get to the racetrack, you know. And you see more of today uh, just being able to hop in and, you know, bring a, bring a checkbook or something or bring their sponsorship and being able to get in the car. And um, I mean, I don't fault them for that. It's just a different era and it's a different way of doing things. But uh, my preference would be that you needed to work on the car. I mean, I built the car from the ground up out of the metal rack, you know, build a motor from the same way, you know, I had to, I, I wouldn't give anything for the experience of being able to do that. And I had, I got a, had a lot of good teachers along the way that, that helped me get through all that. So I had a good idea of everything that made that car work. And I think a lot of the guys today, you don't, don't really have that idea. You know, they got that mentality of just getting in the seat and they got these simulators, they go sit in and drive the racetrack before they get to the racetrack that week. Uh, we didn't have that pleasure. You know, we, I mean, you go to Darlington for the first time and, and you get out there on pit road and you got Dale Earnhardt pulls up beside you and says, come on and run with me. And I'm thinking, I can't even keep up with you. How am I going to run with you? But, you know, the guys like him, you know, Earnhardt, he, you know, he tried to help the guys like me out, you know. Um, he would drive my car at times and, and help it, you know, give me pointers on what I needed to do to make it better. And uh, Sam Ard, I drove for him, you know, when I didn't have a ride back after he had got hurt. I was actually in the same wreck that he got hurt in running behind him at Rockingham. And, uh, you know, that was a bad deal for him. And I really looked up to him and he'd come back and let me drive his, I drove for him, you know, for for a few races. I don't even, I don't, I'm not, I don't even remember the years, but it, uh, that was a great experience being able to drive for him. and. Uh, he, when he was became car owner, he had a hard time like the rest of us trying to find sponsorship, you know, for it. So whoever could come up, you know, with a little bit of sponsorship then was able to drive the car. And uh, he had some sponsorship on his own when he got me to drive it, you know, a few times. And so it was, uh, this is very tough times back then. And uh, it's tough times now too. It's just a different era. And it's like, you know, they keep progressing to different cars and different ways of doing things and they just got to get the racing better and they need to get us some rivalry going I think to, to make it all better you know I mean it's uh it's entertainment so you got to see a little more entertainment than you do on the racetrack you know so yeah. it's need some fender rubbing and <laughs> some banging and you know make something happen to get some excitement going who is the most interesting driver that you've you've dealt with throughout the years on the track I, the most interesting, uh, I don't know. I just, like I said, I liked growing up in that era when, you know, you had, you had Tommy Ellis, you know, Jack Ingram and Sam Ord. They, they didn't sugarcoat nothing. I mean, they come and told you what they thought, you know, but they were very helpful and, you know, in helping you out. And, uh, you know, and Dale Earnhardt, he, he helped me out a lot. And uh, I, guess, I guess Earnhardt and, uh, of course, my dad, Max, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, there you, were a lot of good ones back then. Do you still, um, are you doing any racing now? No, I hadn't done none in, uh, I don't know, it's been quite a few years now. Time flies by, really. <laughs> I guess, I guess 03 maybe, 04, somewhere in there. It's about the last time I run. So where are you, what are you currently up to now? Uh, working here at JKS, uh, my buddy Will Spencer. and uh, We do, he does a lot of show car programs, which that's fallen off a little bit, uh, but we still, you know, keep up three or four show car programs and do events with uh, different companies and work with a lot of marketing companies to create uh, the services they want at events with show car trailers and just uh, we take a, some of these biz box trailers and make a building out of them anymore, you know, to showcase the the clients you know what they have to sell and offer and they do a lot of events for that and then we go to England a few times a year which is we we'll still get to scratch the itch of racing you know get to go to a Goodwood Festival of Speed which Danny Lawrence from RCR he's been going for like 15 years he invited us to go about uh, four four years ago uh, to go over there any people over in England they really love the NASCAR stock cars and they don't get to see them very very often so uh, this year we actually got to go to the road course and do the members meeting. We took six six cup cars over there and just did a little demo deal, a little 15 minute demo with uh, 
with Daniel Arts and uh, Andy Petrie went with us and uh, of course my buddy and owner of the JKS Will Spencer he kind of you know uh, spearheaded this whole thing to, to get those cars over there and we'll be going back in July they have the Goodwood Festival of Speed and it's, it's a real you know it's a, it's a fun event you get to see a lot of old cars and motorcycles and you know, it's a it's a great it's a great event for the people over there to be able to, to see the NASCARs. You know, they they really like to come up. They get to walk through there and look at them up close. So it's great it's a great experience for all of them. Awesome. Well, Mr. Barrier, thank you so much for your time today. I know you're a busy man, so thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with us for a few minutes. Well, uh, thank you for coming, Jamal, and uh, I hope the Davis County Network here gets going strong. <laughs> all right, thank you so much.